heading to our next call here. They've just purchased the building. I guess they've got a total of four rooftop units that need looked at, or at least that's what they're telling us. So we're gonna go take a look and see what they need. Okay, so they're not rooftop units. They're definitely split systems and they're old. We've got one unit here we can put our fingers through. Just put my finger through that one. It's got good draft though, I can feel it. Air conditioner is definitely old. Be real surprised if it's any good. This was just purchased and uh, basically just wants to go through it. So, so far we've got a dangerous flu pipe. Air conditioner most likely has got problems and it's leaking. And I'm a real dang surprised this heat exchanger is any good. I may have to go grab the inspection camera and look it over. Don't look the greatest. Igniter most likely is our tolerance. 192, so the igniter is well out of tolerance. Let's see if this thing even runs. Don't want to waste a lot of time on it. Fan came on and it's sensing flame, which is surprising. We've got a camera on the truck I can use that I just got not too long ago. So my camera here has uh, front and side views and I can't see a definite crack in the heat exchanger but you can see where you know the weld joints are at things aren't looking very good. Our coils matted, coils not level, chance of this thing not being low will be slim to none. Flue pipe needs replaced, needs reduced, needs properly done, need proper uh, Romex connector, need a new hot surface igniter, flame sensor needs cleaned. Lower wheel probably could use a good pulling. Honestly, as much time as we're going to spend on it, I'm going to recommend you replace it, but this is going to be a rental property, so I don't know how that's going to work out for right now. I definitely am not going to leave the heat on, so I've got it turned off. It's uh, not safe to operate, and that'll definitely be noted on my bill. Uh, we can't sabotage it or anything like that. All we can do is turn it off non destructively. So every state's going to be different on how that works, but like I said, we. I ran a hole here, which is usually how I'll do it. Try to get a better angle at it, and it just, it'd be easier probably just to yank the heat exchanger out. So, I mean, if he really wants to tear into it, that's what we can do. And this thing's got to be in 1990, 92-ish, somewhere in that ballpark. I remember these were a little old, I think, even when I started. Not sure what in the world that's supposed to be. Suction line's really cold. Liquid's not even hot. It's definitely cold. Yeah, it feels like it's flooded. All right, it's got to go through a hatch right there by an aluminum ladder. I'm going to. Check this one out. The one up there on the roof. Um, <sighs> Subcooling superheat uh, is a little out of whack. It was overcharged. Coil being dirty like that's not helping none. Super is going to be low airflow. Um, he's planning on just getting rid of that whole unit over there 
he's gonna be renting that out to uh, to somebody he cares about. So that's uh, they're just gonna get rid of that. Now at least this one here is a Bryant. We can get parts pretty easily for it, but this one is in a whole lot better shape. Um, it's newer, it's a 98, at least we can tell how old it is. What bothered me about this is when you look back here in the back, which you can't see with this camera, there's some black soot looking stuff back here. Now that's probably because these burners here are in such poor condition. When you look at the inside, they're completely matted shut. And uh, so we're going to wash them out. Yes, wash. Wash them. W O R S H. Wash. We're going to wash them out. Flame sensor looks like it's bent or broke. This is why you replace a flame sensor. See how it turns? I don't believe in changing flame sensors that are not wore out. It's such a scam. So, anyhow, this one here is rotating, so it's obviously needing a flame sensor. The tension of the wire can hold it in place, but that's not really how we roll. Looks like the igniter was changed. That's flopping around in there like that. It's not good. Let's go ahead and snug that up and we'll check the resistance on it too. Now this does have side camera. So there's the side. You can see now it's on the side of it versus the front. This thing is only I think 89 bucks, 90 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the bottom below. Um, I have a toolbox area, but I'm going to probably get rid of that. Um, sounds like uh, the company I was running that through is taking a lot of my leads and not giving me any credit for it, which is total bull. So we're just going to put direct links down in the description down below for most of everything I ever use, which, you know, obviously I love my tools. Well, let's get in there and take a look and see what we can find, if we can see anything with one of the split views here. Okay, you can see as we're going in there that my camera's pointed upwards. You can see all of the black crap in the back. You can see the bottom there on the one. There we go. So it kind of makes it nice there like that. It doesn't look like it's completely done in. We may just go ahead and run it and see how it does. Well, we can't even run it. You don't have the power on this particular apartment. Yeah, there's not a whole lot I can do on this one because we have no power. Um, we're going to wash these burners out here. Okay, we're looking at the evaporator. It, uh, it's not horrible. It's not perfect. We're going to see what's going on here. I can actually see through the burn now. Imagine that. Yeah, it's completely can't see crap through that thing at all. Yep, you can see through it just fine now. So we might be able to spit shine this thing up, make it at least uh, runnable. It's like a bunch of water. And it's... Oh, so that's wonderful. Didn't even notice that. So the drain must be plugged up. Let's check this igniter and just about tell you it's probably bad or going bad. Usually when it comes to carrier, they want it under 95 ohms or 73. So believe it or not, it's actually still pretty good. Definitely looser than I care for. So the flame sensor went and cleaned it up, but it definitely should be replaced. It'll work. It just, if you don't want problems later, <clears throat> definitely want to get it replaced. That rotates and it's not going to sense flame. Common sense. You can see why it's kind of floppy in there. A little piece of sheet metal, which is actually pretty thick. Probably went to a machine screw before, but let's see if we can tighten that up. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It doesn't floppy dunk around. It's all better now. Here's a tip. Don't ever use your freaking drill to screw that thing back in there, because if you do, the vibration of it will cause that freaking igniter to go bad. I've done it. That really sucks. You go there and there's nothing wrong with the igniter, and then you, you know, do some adjustments like this. Next thing you know, you break their igniter. Or it doesn't even break. It just basically jars it to the point where it doesn't make connection. And the uh, thing just freaking needs replaced. Either way, they know that it worked before, and now it don't. Well, unfortunately, I 
have no way to run this for us because I have no gas and I have no electric. But we do at least got it cleaned up. I'm going to recommend we come back and make sure that it runs safely. I should look at those orifices. It's not a problem you usually have. Get spiders in there. Looks like they're all open. I think better it be is if we get this thing swept out and get some of this crap out of here, because that's pretty bad. So we went and picked up a new flame sensor. So we've got that. Got it all swept out. Looks a lot better than it did. And should be ready to go for when he gets the power and gas turned on. Very, very nice. Okay, the board looks new. Wow. That makes me think that's not the greatest of shapes. Let's see if we can drive a screwdriver through it. happening is that chimney should have a flue liner one they're both draft induced so it's probably not um, lined all the way up which would not surprise me that was very common all right so we tore out the three inch garbage it was here and we're starting to run a five to a three three here got this kind of punched out but it's kind of just ballpark in right now then we gotta get it sealed back up. But that's where we're at so far, just squeezing it through there and get it, uh, get it hooked back up. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Right, so we got it done, mounted up. We got a scrap there to help pull it so it can't come back out. Got it all mortared in. Got it going five inch over here to the 533. Three. Coming straight down to there. And coming back over to here. Had to use 245s because we are offset here. So there wasn't a whole lot of options there. So we got that there. Got to back up straps here on the back side. Everything's pretty dang straight for uh, for a service guy. So uh, got them turned back on. Let's go over here to the other side. We're not even gonna mess with this furnace. Uh, they need to go to a 90 percenter or run a flu liner, which I'm not messing with. So right now, we're trying to get into this little pit of hell. Let's see if we can clean some of this crap out and see if we can get this flu pipe replaced. Worst case scenario, at least get this water heater uh, working. And then otherwise, they can have to step in, step up to an electric one. This freaking chimney is about freaking shot. They just acquired the business, so uh, they're just kind of getting an idea of what all they need to do work on. And that was really all we were supposed to do, was to basically evaluate, kind of get ready and make sure it's safe to operate. So we got this one done too, and had to scrape a crap load of gunk out of there. But on the other side, about a half a foot, foot up, is the other uh, exhaust pipe, so flue pipe. And so it's nice and clean and clear now. Um, this chimney's falling down, though. They, I'm going to recommend on my paperwork they switch over to electric or go to power vent, one or the other. Um, just got to finish sealing up around that penetration. Uh, other than that, that finishes this one. Now we just finish up on the other furnace. This furnace here is completely shut off, and we're not messing with this. All right, so this is the last furnace here. We're just going to do a basic clean up here. Get the flame sensor cleaned up, get the uh, condensate traps blown out, cleaned out. Like I said, we've got the flue pipes and all that stuff taken care of on the water heaters. The one on the other side, the gas is not on for that particular one, so we need to relight that one. Uh, he needs to get going, so we're not going to go check the air conditioner, which with us being here now and uh, September seemed to be October. It's not too worried about the air conditioner, so we're not going to mess with those. But, uh, do some basic checks here, make sure this thing's 
operating properly, which usually I don't have too many problems with these furnaces. Cheap, but good. Usually work just fine. Where is that before? We basically sold the airflow version, which is a derivative of Linux or Allied Air. So I know this furnace pretty good. And the biggest problems we had with it was flame sensors and condensate trap problems and pressure switches. Other than that, it actually worked halfway decent. So go figure. Not seeing anything too major up in there. It appears this has been working pretty decent for a while. I got the fan running all the time. I like using the longest shutoff time for the fan for heating. That's pretty much my procedure. I've had so many trip limit trips later down the road. Let's check this capacitor, make sure it's alright. That's a pig. 37.4. Holy crap. What is this little puppy rated for? It's rated for 40. It's at 37. Minus 6%. Yeah, 37.5, it's there. We can always change it when we come back. He wants to get out of here, so we're not going to spend a lot of time doing it like I normally would do it. So let's just go ahead and jump it out. Where is my freaking W? I used blue. It's nice. They didn't bring combustion air in for the furnace because you know it takes a couple extra minutes. There's an igniter. Burners run. I'd like to go on through and do temperature rise and do all that other crap, but don't uh, let's see that happening today. I got so freaking distracted with all these repairs and all this crap that wasn't done right when it was installed. It just pretty much ate up a good portion of the day, along with the air conditioners and everything else. And all this thing's running. Gotta make sure it shuts down. Got her off. See if she runs and cools down. Call it a day. It's not much of a check for today. It's definitely not how I normally do it, but it needs to get going. So the air conditioners for this are up on the side of the building. That's drying up pretty nice. Yep, that's pretty nice. Don't look too bad. So, um, yeah guys, so basically this is just uh, another check, uh, check out and whatever. Not a whole lot major. But this is real life. So we had uh, a couple furnaces. We got the salesperson called gonna have them uh, give us a price or give him a price on the uh, furnaces one downstairs one upstairs and he can go from there whatever he wants to do uh, the one I don't feel as though is safe uh, the other one I don't uh, like the way the chimney is so it needs vented properly or flue line ran which you can see this chimney's got freaking cracks all the way down through it it's deteriorated I would guesstimate the building's probably at least 100 and at least 100 years old. That's going to wrap this one up, guys. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, we will catch you on the next one.